Hi. Okay. So we are now going to talk about yarn because, oh man, oh, I have so much yarn and I'm kind of embarrassed at how much yarn I actually have. So I'm not really going to show you, but okay. So there's different sizes of yarn. There's different colors. There's different fibers. Um, so let's talk about weight. Now, a skein of yarn, that's what this is called, remember? This is a skein. So each skein has on the label a number. It also has the size knitting needles and the size crochet hooks you need, as well as the fiber it is and how you can wash it and how much is here. So for certain projects, you're going to get instructions that say, like for example, our pattern, it calls for number eight knitting needles, which is the five millimeter and the worsted weight yarn. So this is number four. Number four is worsted weight yarn. Um, in the Pinterest group or Pinterest board that I have created for this group um, and for this class, the link's down below, and I, I'm putting some little charts in there that will help you guys understand different weights. So there is a post in there that um, another company posted on their blog, and it shows different weights and kind of explains what each weight would be used for. Most of the time for like basic projects, like our little knitted clocky cozy sleeve that we're going to be making is just a number four worsted. That's pretty standard. It's a pretty standard weight. Um, there are different um, materials that you can get, but for our purposes, just get acrylic. It's just a cheap yarn. It's like two or three bucks for a, gi a giant thing. You can use coupons at Joann's and Michael's and places like that. Um, Hobby Lobby also has them as well, but we'll talk about where to buy them later. So the weight is basically the thickness and how it, how many stitches you get per, per inch. So this is a heavier weight, as you can see, it's a lot thicker than our worsted weight. This one is considered a bulky weight. I believe this one is actually a number five weight. It might be chunky. It might be chunky. Um, this one I got from Hobby Lobby, it's Baby B. And it tells you again, your knitting needles, what it's made out of. This one is acrylic and polyamide. Um, but for you're gonna use different size weights for different things. Like I, these hats that I made, they're made out of a bulky, um, a bulky weight yarn, and they knit up really fast. So the smaller the yarn, usually the longer the project is gonna be. So if you want to start out with a bulky weight yarn and bulky projects till you get the hang of it, go right ahead. Um, you can get an acrylic bulky weight yarn. Um, if you feel this and then feel the, this is Woolies and this is Hometown USA. Same company, um, different fibers. So this one has wool. This one is, is com completely synthetic. Um, it's acrylic. This is a wool blend. But if you feel it, it just feels better. And it, it honestly, it's not so sticky. Acrylic yarns tend to be a little sticky on your hands. And I mean, your hands naturally sweat a little bit anyway. Um, I just prefer a little bit of wool. But for starting out, get the acrylic. Or if people have sensitivity to wool, stick with the acrylic. Um, so your pattern will call for different size weights. and. The person who creates the pattern sometimes changes the needle size, even though um, this bulky weight calls for, it's a number six, it says super bulky, my bad. Um, and it calls for a, where's the, nine millimeter needle, okay? So your pattern may actually call for a 10 millimeter or smaller to make it a tighter knit. So you can change the needle size, but it changes the gauge of your, of your project. 
So the smaller the needle, the tighter it's gonna be, the bigger the needle, the looser the, knit, the stitches are going to be. Um, so each skein, it tells you your weight, um, your project, your pattern is gonna tell you your weight. It's going to tell you what size needles you need to use, okay? So even though the skein puts their guidelines on there, those are rules are meant to be broken. So you can totally change it. And sometimes I knit tighter than, you know, a lot of the patterns say that you're supposed to knit. So uh, sometimes I have to go up in needle size. Um, now there's different fibers. Like I said, when you're starting out, totally stick with acrylic. Um, cotton is generally used for things like washcloths, um, coasters and um, things that um, have a more firmer texture, I guess. But like, again, your pattern will, will tell you what works best. But um, for my newborn props that I make and my children's props, I love alpaca because it has low allergens and it's fuzzy. Like, I mean, it just, it photographs beautifully. This is a little romper I did. Um, you've probably seen some of my pictures if you um, go to my website or are on my Facebook page for Leslie Q Photography. Um, and this is the little matching bonnet. Um, this right here is a stockinette stitch. This is a stockinette stitch and it makes these V's. We're going to learn a little bit about stitches. I'm not going to go too much into depth because truthfully you can go on Pinterest and you can search knitting stitches and you will get a plethora of them. Um, so this is a cable knit. Don't mind, I've used this. I wear this every year. That's why it's a little worn out. Um, but this is just my, my headband. It's a cable knit and then it's a one by one rib on the edges stockinette stitch like this and like this does tend to curl at the edges so a lot of times the patterns will do a rib or something similar or something a different stitch on the edges to keep it from curling up and that way you don't have to block it too um so this is stockinette stitch this is called garter stitch now in knitting your when we get into um, actually creating your um, coffee cozy or coffee sleeve we're gonna do knit stitches and purl stitches this is all knit stitches front back good side bad side it's called the garter stitch so you just knit then you turn you knit you turn you knit okay we'll discuss that later but this one's garter this one's stockinette those are the two main ones and then of course you can do a rib stitch, which is knit, knit, curl, curl, knit, knit, curl, curl. Um, and then you do at the edge of hats, we also tend to do rib stitch because it's stretchy. This is my slouchy hat, so, but yeah, it makes it stretchy. So as we go along and as you get progressively better, you can start to get creative and pick patterns that make your heart happy. Like I just make stuff because I think they're pretty. Do I wear everything I make? No. And a lot of times I give it away or give it as gifts and things like that. My girls love toys, especially my nine-year-old. She wanted a little dog. So, I mean, this took forever because it's a bunch of little pieces that you have to sew together. Um, so each thing was created separately and then you sew them on. But once you start getting more confident and are able to um, do more advanced patterns, you can knit in the round and you can learn to do different things and then you can modify them and make them your own and change them, which is kind of fun too. Um, as far as our yarn goes, I think that about covers it. Um, like I said, go on the Pinterest group. It'll teach you about different sizes and weights. This is a lace weight. Um, and it would be a lower number, like a one or even a zero. It's like nothing, right? This is for intricate lace work. 
um, and then it goes on up to super bulky and then they've got the real real huge bulky ones that you've seen those blankets made out of that can actually get very expensive and it's cheaper just to buy the blanket so I don't get it but you know whatever if you want to make a super bulky blanket oh my gosh please do please please do um, yeah I think that covers our yarn for right now and we will move on thank you